I just showed you how to create a class in Qt Creator. Now I told you that I want this class to do all the control of the moment of um, our rectangle from this class, not from uh, the hard coded values here in main.qml frontend. So I want this X position to be getting from our class. I want this position to be moved from this class and we're going to implement this in coming tutorial. So because we're going to scale our game into bigger project, right? We are, but I'm like emphasizing on smaller concepts because I want you guys to learn as much as possible. I'm not making this tutorial just for the sake of um, making a tutorial, but I want you guys to learn as much as possible. Even though if you want to create a next game, you, you, you won't be clueless on what to do, uh, how to do, you just copy the code now, you, you, you wonder how to uh, make things work for another game. But when you understand these fundamentals, you would be able to create multiple different games without any problem. So my focus is on to teach you all the knowledge that I have in a very simple way, in a very simpler uh, language. Uh, I'm sorry if my accent is not that good or my English is not that good. Uh, I'll try to include subtitles for all um, tutorials, but I hope uh, you stick with all the tutorials, watch it till the end. And um, I'll try to explain it in a very simple way so that you will understand everything, even the smaller details. So let's go further. I'm, I'm gonna explain you something, a new new feature that is given by Qt, which is Qt, sorry, Q property, Q underscore property. So it has some, you can see some parameters here. And why did I want to use Q property here in this game? I'm gonna explain this to you. And right now I'm using C++ class. So if you don't know C++ and um, you're still continuing with the video, it's okay, you can continue and uh, see my code and how things work. But I really recommend you learning C++ and object-oriented programming in C++ before diving into this uh, tutorial. It's gonna help you a lot. But if you already know C++, then you're fine to go because I'm gonna use some of the features in C++ which I might not explain. So I'm using Q property here, which takes type name and these parameters, I'm gonna explain what this is. We using Q property here because what this does is like, for example, I change something in my QML and my, this class will not be notified unless I write a bunch of lines of code, like a different function that checks the QML front end and fetches the data and then fixes, fixes it somewhere in the variable. That's a lot of hassle. That's a lot of work and we, we are using a framework which needs to be helping us connect those things front end and back end, right? So this this thing helps you connect your C++ class with your QML front end. You can uh, track down the updates using different things. Now I'm going to show you how you can do that thing and let's move ahead. And I'm going to first before moving to something else. I'm gonna create some private variables. Just notice here, I will create um, double mx. So double mx is for the current current position of our rectangle on x dimension. So on x dimension, and similarly double m y will store our value of y dimension of our rectangle and double um, x speed will like give the value of how many pixels I'll move when I push the arrow key. Just like in um, main.qml, we are like moving by 10 pixel. It's like subtracting that coordinate in here in x. So I'm moving in that direction, similar to that. We're gonna keep that value here in x speed. And before doing anything else, I'm gonna create something. So these are in private section, right? I don't want to expose this in public, so everybody can access it. I want to make a getter and setter inside of this class. And if you know OP, you already know what getter setters are. So because I cannot directly access this MX uh, from GUI or somewhere outside of this class, so I need to assign a getter. So for getter, what I will do is getter will have a return type double and the getter function will be x 
because it gets the value of x in the current position and it will return what mx you can see here i'm returning mx value so whatever value is stored here you can get that value by using x function so whatever function you whatever value you want to receive you can receive it here so the only value is stored here but you can receive it through getter similarly you can do it through do it for y and receive the dimension of current dimension of y with this getter and for setting setter let's uh, make setter set x i'm going to say set x and then to set a value i'll just take a value as a parameter a double value here and then here look very very carefully as this will return some value double value because my is double that's why the return type is double and, uh, and i'm re returning the uh, value of my in with the function y when i want to set the value by x i don't need to return anything that's why the function type is void now what i'm going to do is i'm going to check if my m x is not equal to value look carefully okay look very very carefully what i'm doing here see what it checks is checks if our current position is not equal to value this value is the position of rectangle in our front end so whatever the change position for example i press the key right right key on my laptop sorry on my keyboard it moves to right let's see if it was initially on 50 pixels on right then if i minus 10 pixel it will move to 40 pixels so it will move to left hand side right so if i minus it will move to left hand side but my current stored value will be 50 and this value that the new received changed value will be 40 and if this is not equal what i want to do is i want to change this current position to this value so what i'm doing is m x is equal to value what i just did is i'm saying like if m x doesn't store if it's not equal to the value of the current position then just take this value and put it for the current position so for now when i subtracted 10 pixel to move left it went to 40 and then the new position will be the current position new current position will be 40 that's what i'm doing here and setting the value of x and similarly i will do it for for what y and our y value will be changed so this is also taking a value the current value and if the current value doesn't match with what has been stored as a current value in our program then it automatically changes our current value to that changed value so that there is a proper synchronous uh, synchronization between front end and back end so because we are always moving inside the game the player rectangle or enemy rectangle is always moving Every, everything is changing so we need to update those changes get updates of the changes that's why we are using queue property that's why i'm showing you what this queue property is, is doing and why we need it here. So I created these uh, getters and setters. And what I also want to do is see here, when the value is changed, what I want to do is I want to say x changed. See here, the value see here, mx and value is not the same. The current position and the value, which is on the front end or what is has what changes has been done with the keys from the laptop it's not the same then what i'm saying is like change that value to our current position because the rectangle has already moved so i need the that moved position to our current value and i also want to notify everyone that this value has changed i created an exchange function and what type of function it is it is a signal and i'm going to say what signal is so i said emit x changed so signal in qt are just functions don't move yet i'm going to say something important sorry signal sic any other signals and what really is signal is a function x changed see what is this doing this signal 
doesn't have any definition. Please never write a definition for signals. It doesn't have a definition. This is not a function. It looks like a function. I said function because you can remember it better, but this is a type of, it looks like a function. It is a function though, but it is a signal which doesn't have a definition. That's why it doesn't have a return type. It's always initiated with, sorry, it's always declared with void. See here void and X changed. The meaning itself is a signal. It is just there to give you a signal that X has changed. It's just there. Imagine a ringtone in your phone. The purpose of this ringtone is to only notify you that something has happened. The ringtone itself doesn't have any functionality. It doesn't do anything. It doesn't work anything. It just rings and that's ringtone meant to give a signal. The ringtone purpose is only to give a signal. And whenever a ring is there, we, we get noticed that something happened, right? There is a call coming. So just like that, this is just a signal. It doesn't do anything. It doesn't have a definition. It doesn't have a, um, a return type. It doesn't return anything. It is just there to give you a signal. And name itself has that signal that X has changed. And I said that whenever the current value and whatever the value ha is on the screen has changed, then emit this um, signal saying that the value of X is changed. This is how you write signals in Qt. No initialization, no uh, definition. Just void and signals name. And then you can use emit keyword for emitting that signal. And this emit keyword is only working because of this mock. Okay. And also one thing that I want to write is public queue object. So I'm also trying to inherit our controller task from queue object because I need to use these things. Sometimes it doesn't work because it is an uh, individual class with no inheritance from the Q object. But we need Q object features. This is the main features of Qt. So we need those features here, like like emit, Q object, Q property. These are the features all coming from this Q object uh, class or header, let's say. And then we're inheriting from that to our class. So now we have this signal. Whenever the value doesn't matches, we change the value of current position to whatever the value had changed with that action of our arrow key. And then we said that X has changed. And wherever this value is also not matching, we're gonna emit saying that our Y had changed too. And then I'm gonna similarly register my signal. Y changed. See, I now I have two signals saying that if X doesn't match with the original value, then change the original value to whatever the current value is and then emit that something has changed. So now you see Q property here. Now it says it needs a type name. It needs a type name. So our type name would be X here, here X. I need this value to be changed. I need this value to be updated. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say double X. This is a type name for us. And the setter for this is x itself read means reading a value reading the value and what is this doing getter is sorry i said setter it's a getter what is this doing getting the value which means reading the value read x and write what setter write means what setting a value writing a value setting so set x set x and notify around this this final and notify means signal if something had changed so x changed so this is how you write a queue property you need your so you need a uh, variable that needs to be changed or that is being updated on the game or in your software in your system then you need queue property to keep the synchronization between your c plus class and your qml front end so whenever it is changed, this this keeps on track of those objects, and then it helps you create that uh, uh, binding between your C++ class and your QML. So right now, I I said register this property as whenever the this value is changed, read scatter setter, and then notify this changed has happened. And same for Y. I hope do you understand this i know it's a bit confusing but slowly and gradually if you do this you will understand this automatically set y and y changed this is a double 
if you want to learn more about key property i recommend you searching up in google and then learn this part it's very important so this is it for this tutorial i just wanted to say how to use queue property now that we used queue property every update that's going to happen inside our game is being notified to our c class without going to fetch that qml look for those loops and then keep on checking those values no you don't have to keep on doing that now you automatically know that something has changed and you have a signal to emit that okay something changed you can immediately emit and then give a signal you didn't have to write a whole bunch of code to do these functionalities and that's the magic of qt so to explain you this code i created a um, class it has the macro which compiles these whatever qt uh, functionalities that you use like emit give properties and those things and you uh, created a setter getter to use it in your queue property parameters to always update your x and y position and if something is updated give signals and receive signals sorry receive values so for that we simply created a base version of receiving the value of the position of the rectangle you know, changing the value of the rectangle and those things so in the next video we're going to see how we can move that rectangle from our c class without um, moving it straight from the javascript like like we did it in our last tutorial so see you in the next tutorial